Welcome everyone, I'm Michal and I'll be talking about uh, how you can create uh, with just a little effort a uh, network intrusion detection system uh, which is NetFlow based. Uh, I would like you to think uh, about this as a proof of concept which is also very effective but still uh, some of the details are not firmly decided so I will appreciate every feedback. Okay, let's start. Um, I will be talking about what is the what are the essential properties of such an intrusion detection system, uh, what the data we have at our disposal with NetFlow. I will give you a brief overview of uh, attacks we are trying to detect and uh, eventually mitigate. And uh, I will be talking about NFZoo, which is the code name for the NITS. Okay, so let's start. So, uh, common intrusion detection framework architecture describe uh, intrusion detection system uh, by with uh, four components, which is uh, basically event generators. Event generators are the factual reporters of your environment. Event analyzers analyze those uh, those facts about your environment and. Uh, try to detect intrusions and uh, malicious activity. Even databases, uh, just the storage and uh, response units. Response units are there to notify responsible people or, uh, or auto create <coughs> automatic actions to m uh, for mitigation of uh, intrusions and uh, malicious activity. Uh, IP flow or network flow is uh, the source of data for our <coughs> detection system. What is IP flow? IP flow is basically a set of packets that uh, are transmitted through your network or let's say networking gear as the switches or routers, which is identified by the five tuple, which is uh, source and destination IP address, source and destination port, a layer three protocol. Then it depends on the <coughs> on the network and protocol if it also have a type of service and uh, depends on the exporter you have if it also include uh, input interface because uh, exporters are of uh, three types basically. Um, first, I already mentioned is the networking gear as the uh, switches and the routers. Then there's uh, software exporters. The usual situation with the uh, software exporters is that you have a switch, you create a mirroring port on the switch and uh, which will pass then all the traffic also to the mirroring port. And on this port uh, is listening some uh, host with um, its interface in the promiscuous mode and uh, create this uh, IP flows in uh, software implementation. The third <coughs> type is a probe, which is, uh, in my opinion, the best way to collect those flows. And uh, you place the probe uh, somewhere in, in your network infrastructure. And basically, with the probe, you are not interfering, or, or rather, let's say, you are not increasing the load on your networking gear. Uh, network NetFlow as a protocol defines how how those IP flows or network flows are uh, exported to to processing. So basically, <coughs> is a UDP protocol, and uh, in a header it contains the version number, sequence number, export time, and the uh, number of uh, flows in in this datagram. Uh, for version of 9 uh, of NetFlow protocol, it also contains a list of templates since uh, in version 9 they are introducing templating so you can, uh, you can export more or less data, depends on the templates. Each record then uh, contain the common identifier, which is basically the layer 3 headers. 
So source destination IP address, source destination port. If it's ICMP protocol, then it's the type and code and the uh, type of service. So <coughs> besides that, it also contains uh, much more valuable information as a uh, time of first and last time it was seen this flow from which you can calculate the duration of the flow. It contains uh, also bytes that were transmitted by the flow, a uh, number of uh, packets, s and the uh, IP address of the next hope router. And uh, what is really valuable in information is also TCP flex and the exporter IP address as well. So NetFlow as an uh, exporting feature of uh, at least uh, Cisco switches is uh, works um, uh, works by managing uh, NetFlow cache. So basically, when um, a router or switch uh, see the packet that the <coughs> he uh, the s the switch uh, computes the common identifier, the five tuple. Take a look into the NetFlow cache. If it's uh, if this uh, five tuple is not there, it will add it, it this flow to the NetFlow cache. It, if it's already there, it will uh, it will reset the it will reset the idle counter or mm, the inactive timeout, and uh, and that's it. So basically, how the uh, router or switch know that it should export the the flow is by inactive timeout and uh, active timeout. Those are both configurable uh, values, and um, I think the default value for inactive timeout is like 15 seconds, and for active timeout is like 30 minutes. That's too much, but you can drop it down to one minute. Uh, why is this important? This is important in the when I will be talking in uh, about the detection that uh, this uh, influence the reaction time of the system. So basically, when when you have the flow and it's inactive for f and the uh, router does not encounter any packets wi uh, with the same uh, five tuple in uh, 15 minutes, uh, in 15 seconds, uh, which is uh, inactive timeout, it will export the flow and remove it from the cache. If uh, the flow is still active, and um, but it reached the active timeout, it will be exported and uh, removed from the cache. When we are talking about TCP flows, as soon as it encounter finish or reset flags, it will export the flow and remove it from the cache. Okay, so what uh, what attacks we are trying to detect and mitigate eventually? So, the m probably the easiest to detect are the volume-based attacks like UDP floods and ICMP floods, so where the goal is to saturate the bandwidth. With the protocol is also quite easy, but they don't have to create such a big amount of uh, volume of the traffic. So the scene floods and uh, the TCP flag abuse. Um, here the goal is to consume the servers or the networking gears uh, resources. The the deadliest attacks, but with this kind of information we have from the NetFlow, where we lack the data de details about the content of the traffic. It's very hard to detect uh, application layer attacks like the get and post flows and uh, buffer overflows and malform da data, where the goal is to crash the application because uh, because from from the point of the netflow it uh, it seems to be uh, legit traffic, legitimate traffic. Okay, so <coughs> NFZoo or our network uh, intrusion detection system uh, consists from uh, we ha we have Cisco switches as uh, the NetFlow exporters. Then there's a NetFlow capture daemon, which is part of the NFSEN uh, package. We customize it a bit so it uh, it is not using the RD files for the for the flows 
as a storage, but rather it uh, open a zero MQ publisher socket and uh, export it there. So it's uh, I want to emphasize that the publisher and subscriber model give us the ability to create plenty of subscribers for any purpose. For, for now we have two, basically two subscribers, which is uh, one is uh, just simple pipe to Elasticsearch as a storage now. And the second is uh, for analyzing and uh, detecting the anomalies in the, in the traffic, which goes through the classifier. Again, classifier is a subscriber. It creates uh, another publisher, publisher socket. So you can uh, put uh, more analyzers behind one classifier. What classifier do I will talk about in the on the next slide? So, uh, as I already mentioned, for the storage we use Elasticsearch, and uh, and as a front end for it, uh, Kibana. Um, I guess you guys know what Kibana is. So I'll, I'll skip that. And uh, as uh, as a event collector for mm, notifications about intrusions, so we use uh, Sentry. Do you guys know what is what Sentry is? Nobody. Okay. How you do your crash reporting? Uh, <coughs> okay, so classifier. So we created classifier so we can take advantage of the zero MQ filtering. So, so each classifier can uh, subscribe only to records, which is uh, important for the analyzer, like based on the IP address. Basically, it creates for each received record, it creates two messages. One is uh, prepare, pr one uh, for one it's prepared with the source IP address, and the second is with the destination IP address. Then uh, <coughs> analyzer handler is a subscriber to the classifier and subscribe to the IP range, or or it can also subscribe to all the traffic classifier produced, but uh, then it will receive, uh, receive uh, two messages for each record. Uh, well, analyzer handler just pass those messages to the analyzers, which actually do the work and try to detect anomalies and emits uh, the events to the sentry event collector. Yep. So. This is a sample of the analyzer's configuration. It's uh, I'm I'm thinking it's pretty straightforward. It's just uh, instantiating of class, which uh, you provide all the keyword arguments. The the important uh, argument here is the time time counter interval with uh, the inactive and active timeout on the exporter these uh, three uh <coughs> these three settings define the reaction time of the system as a whole okay so when the analyzer decided that the some something is going on something un unwanted it will report to the sentry an event which um, may look like this so when uh, when the responsible people from the network admi admi uh, administration re receive uh, an, an email from sentry that something's going on they have already all the information at their hand that uh, about which which IP is probably under attack and which analyzer decided that uh, probably intrusion is happening, on what basis it decided about it, and so on. And what's uh, when such an email is received? Uh, what basically? Uh, Mm. 
network administra administrator basically take a look at uh, such a dashboard made in Kibana which uh, provides him with all the information about the network this is uh, this is our network in uh, let's say calm state uh, maybe I, I forgot to mention that the uh, IP flows uh, which are uh, they are uh, identified by the five tuple that basically means that for each TCP connection it creates two records in each director in each direction so therefore all the tables are <coughs> are in uh, in like source and destination and the vice versa so here we go like by the here are the mo mo most talking hosts here we go the profile of our network by the protocol uh, then by the port which they use and uh, there's the destination port and here that's uh, that's very valuable information is uh, geolocation information f which are which are passed uh, to from the pipe to elastic search for each source and destination address so we basically we know which countries we are talking uh, most with uh, that's it so uh, the network administrator receive uh, such an email from Sentry that something's going on and he has the IP address so basically what he do what he do uh, he put this uh, IP address in uh, such a simple Lucene query for Kibana and the whole dashboard will be filtered by the IP address and he can uh, he can take a look that uh, who is uh, this host talking with and what what is the profile of this host yeah that's uh, that's it so ba basically what what we see here is that uh, this this particular host is talking uh, with uh, germans and uh, the and the slovak ip address so it's pretty obvious that when suddenly a uh, lot of Chinese and South Koreans uh, start talking to the IP address, it, it is obvious that something unwanted is going on and probably it's uh, intrusion. So what, w what we can do uh, at, uh, in that moment is that we, we can uh, black hole the world's traffic or, or we can pass propagate the traffic to the scrubbing center if, if the client paid for that and yeah that's how we can mitigate the volume based attacks if it's not volume based it's probably <coughs> it's probably for the client to take additional steps and uh, change its uh, firewall configuration and so on Good, um, okay so this is what what uh, the network administration ad administrator see when he comes to Kibana, but uh, he has already all the information in a Sentry as well. So each each uh, Kibana dashboard has uh, such a nice URL. But what what is impo what is important is that uh, this URL has all the information about the about the dashboard, all the visualizations visualization that are at on it, and uh, also the time frame from and and to information, and also the query, which I already showed that it can be. The whole dashboard can be filtered for the desired IP address or range or whatever you want. <coughs> so, so this is how uh, this is how such an event in Sentry look like. 
and it's already filtered for the desired IP address and uh, the time of the event, when, when it happened. Okay, to, s to sum it up, what we have from thanks to the NetFlow and just a few simple Python scripts, we have uh, the visual representation of our network traffic. We have uh, excellent insight into the network traffic and uh, we can detect anomalies on uh, based on IP or IP range and we can configure the notification per analyzer so we can in the end we can uh, offer our clients clients sentry dashboard specially for their IP addresses which which they have and uh, yep that's probably all thank you very much for your attention and if you have some question good so so we have one question on slido uh, what does your devops infrastructure look like what does your devops infrastructure look like hmm. what, what do you <laughs> what do you mean by what does it look like i mean we have <laughs> Plen so plenty of uh, machines, uh, <coughs> um, and we deploy software with uh, salt stack. So yeah, you can you can maybe tell us more about your stack you're using. What what stack we are using? Okay, so we are using Python everywhere. Like we have uh, we are we are using for the web front ends. We are using Django and Cherry Pie, and uh, for the front end we are using uh, Angular JS. As a as a backend, uh, or as a server, we use uh, Nginx with uh, MicroVisgi, with combination <coughs> for the asynchronous asynchronous task. We use Celery with RabbitMQ and and for the cache we use Memcache. That's probably that's it. And Kay. for the searching, we use Elasticsearch. And for the crash reporting, we use Sentry. And you should definitely check out Sentry. They, they have also a freemium plan. It's, it's open source. It's basically a Django app, so it's easily extensible with the plugins. They already have, uh, have tons of plugins for GitHub, GitLab, Bitlab, Bitbucket. So you can, from each event, you can create the uh, issue. So yeah, check <coughs> it out. You can install it on premise, but they, as I already mentioned, they offer it as a service with freemium plan. So there's no reason to not check it out. <laughs>